26. We're going to look at it in just a moment. Now, scholars and those who search things out <clears throat> believe that this could have been a different time, a different message that Jesus was saying the same things. Now, you that's had kids or hard-headed husbands, <laughs> you said that, not me. I'm not going there. Amen. We need to pray for Josh after church. Doesn't hear the first time. Bar's repeating, doesn't it? And so Christ is telling them again some of these things so that they'll catch hold. Many times he tells them. How many times does he let them know that he must be crucified? And yet they are amazed and act as though nobody ever told them that. Uh, and that's the way we do so many times. So either it's the same time or it's at a different time or he's repeating the same message. It is Christ speaking these words. Luke chapter 6 and verse 21. If you would give this message a title this morning, it would be your reward is great in heaven. About every song that we've sung or talked about is about what's waiting for us. I have not seen, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the thing that God has prepared for His children. We cannot even begin to imagine what Christ has waiting for us. Your reward is great in heaven. Luke chapter 6 and verse 21. Listen to these words. <clears throat> Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall sa separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like matter did their fathers unto the prophets. Father, touch your word this morning. Glory to God. Let it speak to our hearts this morning. Drive your word deep into our hearts and let us have a longing as we never have for heaven's shore. Help us to get our eyes off of all the things in this world and to place our eyes upon Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, let us look for that time that you're coming again to receive us unto yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. He said, blessed, even though you hunger now, one day you're going to be filled. I've been, and those who work in my field have been in some mighty fine homes, mansions. I, I remember one house that was built, I mentioned it to you, this has been a few years ago, the front door, the front entrance cost $150,000. I'd rather have my front door, to be honest with you. I'm glad he spent it, though. It put a lot of food on my table. That's the blessings of God. A lot of people say, oh, they'll not be spending money like that. Well, if they didn't, what would we do, be doing? But those things does not move me. I am thankful for what God has blessed me with. I, what I hunger for is His righteousness and the things that God has for me. And one of these days I'm going to step over. Do you realize we talked about this last Sunday, me and some folks hung around after church and we talked about, there's just a veil between us and eternity. 
We think that eternity is somewhere as far off and that heaven is somewhere... As... There's just a veil. Just a thin veil that separates us. And one day we're going to be walking, stepping, and we're going to step over on streets. How pure as gold. Brother Doug, you believe it? Yes, I do. Not one jot, not one tittle has ever failed of his word or what he has told me or what he's promised me. Why shouldn't I believe it? Great is your reward. We are going to be filled to the full one day. There is sorrows in our lives. I wish I could tell you as a child of God you'd never face sorrow. But before you get out the door, by the time you get out the door, there could be some great tragedy or sorrow come your way. But I'm telling you, my God's already made a way and made a plan and He'll see you through it. If God brings you to it, He'll see you through it. I've seen our people go through things and I thought they'll never be able to stand. This will destroy them. This, this will keep them down. And I've seen the Spirit and the Holy Ghost of God come down and give them a comfort and a peace. Did they cry? Sure they did. Was they sorrowful? Sure they were. They human. But God helped them up, brought them through it. Oh, hallelujah. And they shout God's victory and God's praise today because of His love and because of His grace and because of of His goodness. So one day we're going to sit on those streets of gold. I, I, I have to imagine, you forgive me, I've got a very vivid imagination. Very vivid. And Sister Carolyn, whom I love dearly, and I don't say this to bring tears or whatever, but I imagine her up on the streets of gold just to laughing. Oh, and a carrying on, what a time. What a time. Her and Dad, I bet, is joking around. What a time they're having over yonder. And I'm eager to join them. Oh, I'm thankful for everything God's given me. He's blessed me. I, I can't complain. I can't grumble. But, but I, there, there's nothing here to hinder me. There's nothing here to hold me down. Because I have a far, far place to go and we shall laugh a lot of people you know they come to the house of God and they and there's nothing wrong with being sober and being vigilant and, and somber but let me tell you you need to have a joy down in your heart and a happiness down in your soul. We have so much to be thankful for. The world doesn't want to see people going around looking like a mule eating briars. They see that already like it is. But what they want to see is a child of God that knows he's got a better place to go. That heaven is waiting him. And we can laugh. We can laugh. I believe God's got a sense of humor. I believe that. If he didn't, why would he have made monkeys? And then when you get home, look in the mirror and say, why did he make you? Huh? Laugh. We're going to laugh and rejoice. And then he said the reward is great. That reward, and we'll talk about that a little further in a moment. I want to look as he goes down now. In the other message that Christ gave, whether Matthew didn't record it or not, but here in Luke, there are four woes. In all my time of being in church for 64 years, near about in May it'll be, because I'm sure Mama took me about the week after I was born probably. I don't ever remember four woes being mentioned here that Christ spoke, but I want you to listen to what he said. It's a lot easier to skip over the woes, ain't it? Boy, it's getting quiet now. Verse 24, listen. But woe unto you that are rich. Now I'm going to explain that in a moment. For ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, so did their fathers to the false prophets. Rich. Flip with me quickly. You want to keep your Bibles. 
right close by your side. Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 3 and verse 17. Because, speaking to the church of the Laodiceans and the church in this day and time, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Rich. He's not talking about those who have prospered and he has prospered them. He is talking about people <clears throat> that have trusted in their riches, who look not unto God, but who trust in their riches, and they sit back as the rich man did and say, I have need of nothing, and I'll say to my soul, so take your rest. Build bigger barns and, and, and get more and more and more. That's the rich that he's saying woe to. Listen in Psalms. Or in Amos, I'm sorry. In Amos. In Amos chapter 6 and verse 1. Woe to them that are easy in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. In other words, he's telling his people, you're trusting in man rather than in God. What is your trust in this morning? Who are you depending upon? Are you depending upon your bank account? Are you depending upon your retirement? Are you depending upon your social security? Friend, let me tell you, it can be gone tomorrow. Amen? It's happened before. And I'm going to say it's probably going to happen again. Where is your trust? Where is your dependence? Christ spoke in Luke chapter 12, a little over from where we've been at there in chapter 6. Chapter 12, verses 20 through 21. But God said unto him, Thy fool, speaking to the rich man, This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not Rich toward God. Are you worried about your riches? Or are you worried about your riches? You worried about that pocketbook? You worried about the bank account? All the things of this world? Or do you want to be rich toward God? That is the greatest riches that they are. There was a song we used to sing many years ago. I'm a poor rich man. And I'm thankful I might not have much of this world, but my God has heaped His blessings upon me. He said, those who are full, who laugh now. In other words, they are trusting in the things of this world. Woe unto them, He said. The psalmist said in Psalms 103, verse 35, Psalms one. Got that wrong, verse 5. Verse 5, Psalms 103 and verse 5. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And then just flip over a couple more Psalms, Psalms 107. Psalms 107 and verse 9, he says these words. Satisfied the longing soul, and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. There is nothing no more greater, nothing no more powerful, nothing no more satisfying than the Spirit of God to come down in your life and in your heart and give you a peace that passeth understanding. Something that this world cannot give. Even though you're facing decisions and situations in your life that means different things, yet you can trust in God and know that He will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Know that His hand will will be there for you. Who are you trusting in? Who are you leaning upon? Where is your fullness and your desires being met by? 
Isaiah 55, he says this. I've read this to you before, and you hear, And ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. I'm going to tell you the things of this world will never satisfy. The riches of this world will never bring that peace and that satisfaction that God can. There is a God-shaped vacuum inside the heart, the soul of every one that has ever been born. And only God can fill that spot and that void. Man try to cram everything there is, alcohol, drugs, pleasures, whatever it might be, they try to cram in there and satisfy that longing, but nothing will ever satisfy. Only Jesus Christ, oh hallelujah, coming in your heart and your life and changing you, making you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away and all things become new. Only that can satisfy. And you know you have the love of Jesus. Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life. You can lay your head down on that pillow at night and go to sleep knowing that if you don't wake up, you have a better place to go. Then he mentioned another woe unto those who seek man and seek the praise of man. When we seek the praise of man, oh, what an awful, awful reward we had. Jesus had told us in Matthew 6, 1 through 2, we had already read that. He said, take heed that you do not your arms for man to be seen of them. In other words, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Wherefore, when thou doest thy arms, do not sound a trumpet before these the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of man. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. I see man trying to do things that they might get the praise of man. What a sorry reward. What a sorry reward that man might lift me up. Oh, whatever I do, I want to lift Christ up. I want to bring glory and praise and honor into His name. Whatever work I do, whatever I might say or be, I want it to always shine glory to God. Brother Gary, I don't want the praise of man. Oh, I'm thankful when men love me and I'm thankful when they encourage me in the Lord and we need to encourage one another in the Lord. But I want to tell you anything that is done here is done that God might receive glory and that God might receive the praise. Let's go on now to what he to our main theme of what we was talking about this morning, where he said in verse 23, your reward is great in heaven. Flip with me to the book of Hebrews. We're going to look at two more places, Hebrews and then over to Revelation. Hebrews chapter 10. Listen to what he says. Church, we're living in troubled times. We're living in troubled times. We're living in times where man's hearts are failing them for fear of the things that are coming upon the face of the earth. We're living in times when all the foundations that we think are so secure could slide away. But there is one foundation that will stand sure and steadfast. And that is Jesus Christ, our solid rock. Verse 35, they, the Holy Spirit knew these times would come and he tells us, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. In other words, don't lose that confidence in God. He knows where you're at. Hear me. He knows what you're going through with. He knows what you're facing next week. You don't even know what you're facing, but He does. And He's got it. Don't ever lose that confidence. 
That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants to fill your mind, your heart with fears and with doubts and confusion. He wants you to cast aside your faith and your confidence in God. But do not ever allow that to happen. Listen, verse 36. Boy, this hits me. Mm. For ye have need of patience. We stand in front of the microwave and pat our foot, don't we? Done it this week. Done it this week. For ye have need of patience that as you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while... And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now listen, now the just shall live by faith. Not by feelings. Not by feelings. But by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believing to the saving of the soul. What is there in this world to go back to? What is there to turn around for? Revelation, and I'm going to hush. Revelation chapter 4. I've read these verses to you many times before. And verse 1. A lot of people say, oh, you don't find the rapture in the Bible. No, you don't find the word rapture in the Bible. Not in there. You can read from Genesis to Revelation and the word rapture is not in there. But I challenge you to read from Genesis, not on the outside of the Bible, to Revelation and find the word Bible. Got quiet now, ain't But he's talking about a catching away. We call it the rapture. It's going to happen. It's going to take place. Well, Brother Doug, we read about a catching away and we read about those things, but when does it happen? Well, I can't tell you the day nor the time. If somebody stands up and tells you that, you better get up and leave them. I believe by all the things that he has given us to look at, it is very, very close. In fact, I looked up at the skies yesterday thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful to see that sky split wide open? But Doug, you really believe that's going to happen? Yes, just as sure as I'm standing where I'm standing. One day soon and very soon, what I'm about to read to you is going to happen here after this. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. What was he just talking about? The church age. He was just talking in chapters 1 through 3 about the churches. After this, after what? After the church. Well, Brother Doug, church is going to go through it. No. You stay here if you want to. Glory to God. Are you seeing it with me? You know, you, you turn that trip down if you want to. Not me. I'm waiting. My spirit is already reaching up. Glory. Here's where it's at. After this, after the church, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, my, my goodness, the Holy Ghost, my, 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 my. Come up hither. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Hereafter what? After the church. The church is getting ready to be called away. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, one set on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardis stone, and there was a rainbow about the throne. Can you imagine what a sight that's going to be? Oh, hallelujah. In sight like unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass likened to crystal in the midst of the throne, and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes, 
and behind. What did those four beasts do? They gave glory unto God. They praised the Redeemer. The four and the twenty elders in the rest of this chapter takes those crowns that are upon their head. Brother Doug, do you want to receive many crowns? I sure do. Why do you want to receive them? Because I want to take them off. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I want to place them at His feet and cry out, Thou art worthy, O God, to receive praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving and that day is going to happen church great is your reward try to hush just as sure as you're sitting where you sit one day I believe soon Brother Doug, what are the signs of the rapture? You might be surprised what I'm about to tell you, but there are no signs of the rapture. The rapture. There are signs of the second coming. It takes place about Revelation chapter 19. After tribulation's done down here, and Christ comes in a moment to destroy his enemies. During that time, we're up around the throne of God. But we already see the signs of His second coming. What does that tell me, Brother Tony? That tells me it's getting time. I've never seen a day and a time when a nation, when nations have turned so wicked. And you might get tired of me saying this, but I, I, I just... I don't want you putting your hope in false things. There's no political answer. <laughs> in fact, anybody looking at what we got ought to know there's no answer politically. Either side, I don't care what you are, whether you're a donkey or elephant. We're without any hope in this world. But thanks be to God. Hmm. Oh, I feel His presence. Drive this message home to us, God. See, my hope's not in this world. If the banks fail tomorrow, well, they got F, what is it, F-I-C-A, F-D-I-C-A? I don't remember all them letters. Well, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you do. Because if the banks fail, the government's going to fail. But I know in whom I trust and whom I believe. Brother Mark, he's never failed me. Not one time. Not one time has he ever failed. Not one time will he ever. I can remember as a child sitting, cutting my teeth on Church of God pews. You think children and young people's not listening. They're listening. They might be playing with a car or doing whatever, but they're hearing. And I'd hear them talk about Christ coming. I can remember going out and looking up into the clouds just thinking what a day that's going to be. And they say, you know, as you get older, you become more like a child. Maybe you do. I dribble stuff all over me. I forget things. Instead of crying, Mom, I have to cry, Mary Jane. But I'm getting more homesick than I've ever been before. I see children coming into this world. Precious, precious children. And I thank God what kind of future have they got to face. Then, Brother Josh, I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. And I know great is my reward. 
one who worked for the Lord greatly. Won't call their name. Work for God day in and day out, going and feeding the hungry, <clears throat> ministering to those who are dying. She'd get up one day and go do it, and the next day she'd get up and there'd be even more. A senator visited her one day and began to talk to her and said, How do you go on? knowing that you can never be successful. That pain and sorrow will be there again the next morning. How do you go on? She said, God didn't call me to be successful. God called me to be faithful. But Tony, that's what I want to be. I want to keep my faith looking unto Jesus, the author. When I stumble and I fall, as I told you I did last week. Well, I know y'all don't ever lose your temper. Don't ever not listen to the Spirit. The Spirit tried to tell me, but I didn't listen. But even though I do those things, yet He loves me. And He has a place prepared for me. Father, I thank you this morning for this congregation, for those who are listening, and those who will listen later. Lord, I pray if there's one <clears throat> does not have the assurance of their salvation, does not have the assurance, should Christ step out on the clouds of glory with the voice and the shout of the archangel and the trump of God's sound, and the dead in Christ rise first. They don't have the assurance of meeting them in the air. Let this be the day. Let this be the moment that they realize, Lord, that they need you. But we've been praying for lost loved ones, God, those that are far away, those that are cold and indifferent. Star them this morning, God. Wake them up. Open their understanding. Help them to see, Lord, the church is ready to go. After this, it's going to be pretty close by. Lord, I pray that you encourage us as your people. I thank you, Lord, that my name is written there. I pray, God, that you help me to keep my face sustained in you. Help me not to try to be successful, but to be faithful to be faithful looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith anybody here this morning you don't have that assurance this altar is open anybody here this morning that has a need, burden, care and you want to come pray this altar is open